eaten well and you have um, eaten your lunch already. Okay, so we are now on week six and uh, adaba week six na sa nine weeks sa ato ang ano nine to ten weeks at the interim one. So mag survive ta sa ita sixth week. And uh, last week we discussed about module 12 and we had some activities in this module. So module 12 is WLAN com com components, WLAN concepts, and then for this week we will be discussing WLAN configuration. Then eventually it will lead us to our uh, assessment on Friday. Friday manangatong schedule. So let me just discuss this one first and then later um, I'll be giving you a link of Kahoot questions. I will not be doing the Kahoot online, but I'll be sending a link so that you can have self-pacing on the Kahoot questions. But the Kahoot questions would be based from the previous module. So like it's a review of the previous module. And then for the questions for this module, I'll be sending it on Wednesday pa. So discussion, and then later I'll be sending the Kahoot link and a task um, with regards to uh, WLAN configuration on an enterprise network. So last time you were, that the task is a uh, wireless LAN controller uh, on a home, on a home bato network. So this time it's enterprise na pod. So that would be later pa. So bear with my discussion. If you have questions, you can just um, unmute and then uh, let me know or you can chat it or if you have any inputs regarding this one regarding the topic you may do so okay so for WLAN um, for this module we will be discussing the following so the the objective of this module is to implement a wireless LAN using a wireless router and wireless LAN controller so last time um, we already had an overview of what is or how is it to configure a wireless LAN controller. So we have uh, one, two, three, four topics. So remote site wireless LAN configuration, configure a basic wireless LAN on the wireless LAN com controller. So like um, we use the management interface and WPA2 PSK authentication. Configure a WPA2 enterprise wireless LAN on the WLC. And lastly is to troubleshoot uh, WLAN issues. I'll leave the video with you. Come na ang mag play the video. I just do the discussion. So like um, we have wireless routers. So you have your wireless routers at home. So this is just an example. Since this one is a proprietary of Cisco, so it will discuss about Meraki. And then um, remote workers, small office, uh, small branch offices and home networks often use a small office and home router. So these routers are sometimes called integrated router because they typically include a switch for wired clients, a port for an internet connection, and wireless components for wireless client access. So we have this, so the router has antenna, and then you have four ports for your switch for your wired clients, and then you have your internet um, port. Then this one, it depicts the physical connection of a wired laptop to the wireless router, which is then connected to a cable or DSL modem for internet connectivity. So this is a typical setup for wired. Then for wireless, uh, you just have to get the SSID and then input the the password or whatever security mechanisms that the router has. So wireless routers typically provide wireless LAN security, DHCP services, integrated network address translation, quality of service, as well as other features. So when you log into your wireless router, you have to get the default gateway so you can search for that so cmd then normally it's 192.168.0.1 then it will it will ask you author, authorization uh, authorization ng mga, like username and password and after that you will be directed to the basic setup 
So, sa basic setup, you have to log in to the router from a browser. You have to change the default administrative password if it's a new setup. And then log in with a new administrative password. And then you have to change the default DHCP IPv4 addresses. Renew the addresses and log in to the router with a new IP address. It's like, sorry. So we have here, I know, um, the GUI. So have I know you have tried configuring your routers at home. So uh, when it shows us a GUI, when you do your configuration. Then for wireless setup, you have to view the wireless LAN defaults. You have to change the network mode. Okay, when you change the network mode, this one. So what type of network? Is it auto and only legacy disabled? So it depends upon. So normally it's N or auto. Auto man ang ginabutang ani for ano. And then you configure the SSID. This is the name. You enable it and then you you type the SSID. So ito. Oh, you have to broadcast your SSID data. This is the network name. Service at identifier. And then you have to configure the channel. So normally it's 2.4. Then configure the security mode. So WPA2, personal, and then AES. And configure the passphrase for your security password. Then pag wireless mesh. So this one is for small office or home office. Uh, if you want to extend the range beyond 45 meters indoors and 90 meters outdoors, you can add wireless access points. So that becomes a wireless mesh. Two access points are configured within the same wireless LAN settings from our previous example. So notice the channels are selected 1 and 11 so that the access points do not interfere with channel 6 configured previously on the router. So for this access point, it's 1. For this access point, it's 11. And the wireless router is channel 6. So that's for, ready to interlap, overlap, interlap, interfere. And then not, not network address translation for IPv4. So you have this one. Uh, wireless router, if you look at for a page like the status page shown in the figure, you will find the IPv4 addressing information that the router uses to send data to the internet. Again, this one. The internet IP address for the router is this one. So, the ba, like, you have your public and private addresses. And then, pag mugawas na siya sa imo network, mag, mag, sa tawag ganin, na na siya, na na siya equivalent na public IP. So, that's the role of the network address translation. The IPv4 address is 209.165.201.11. It's a different network than the 10.10.10.1 10 10 10 address assigned to the router's LAN interface. So all the devices on the router's land will get assigned addresses with 10.10.10 prefix. The 209 is publicly routable on the internet. So that's the public address. So any address with the 10, the first octet is a private address and can it be routed on the internet. Therefore, the router will use network address translation to convert private IPv4 addresses to internet routable IPv4 addresses. So with not a private source, which is your local, is translated to a public or global address. The process is reversed for incoming packets. So, kung gikan na po sa internet, translate na po na niya to locally routable na mga packets. So, the router is able to translate many internal IPv4 addresses into public addresses using network address translation. So, that's the purpose of NAT. So some ISPs use private addressing to connect to customer devices. However, your traffic will leave the provider's network and be routed on the internet. So for you to see that, you can search the internet for what's my IP address. So I think you know this already. Some of you or most of you already do this to check for your public IP equivalent. Then quality of service, um, they have, it's an option to configure quality of service. When you configure it, you can guarantee that certain traffic 
types such as voice and video are prioritized over traffic that is not as time sensitive so like email and web browsing on some uh, wireless routers traffic can also be prioritized on specific ports so like this one you have to just select it in your hang gui and then you can just get qos settings in the advanced menu and then if you have a wireless router available investigate the qos settings and then you can just put like this so high medium low priorities so that you will get the the desired uh, priority for your applications then we have what we call uh, port forwarding it's uh, when you block when the routers block tcp and udp ports to prevent unauthorized access in and out of the LAN. however there are situations when specific ports must be open so that certain programs and applications can communicate with devices on different networks so port forwarding is a rule-based method of directing traffic between devices on separate networks so when you reach na tong traffic a router the router determines if the traffic should be forwarded to a certain device based on the port number found with the traffic so for example a router might be configured to forward port 80 that is http so when the router receives a packet with destination port of 80 the router forwards the traffic to the server inside the network that serves web pages for this one port forwarding is enabled for port 80 and associated with the web server at IPv4 address 10.10.10.50. So here, web server 80, external 80. So we refer to the port numbers. So pag nag trigger ka port, it allows the router to temporarily forward data through inbound ports to a specific device. So you can use ports triggering to forward data to a computer only when a designated port range is used to make an, an outbound request. So example though is a video game might use ports to have 270,000 to, to, to 27,100 for connecting with other players. So these are the trigger ports. So a chat client might use port 56 for connecting the same players so that they can interact with each other. So in this instance, if there is gaming traffic on an outbound port within the triggered port range, inbound traffic, chat traffic in port 56 is forwarded to the computer that is being used to play video game and chat with friends. When the game is over and the triggered port are no longer in use, port 56 is no longer allowed to send traffic on any type of, of any type to that computer. Okay, so you had done this uh, configure a wireless network. I think I let you do this last week. And then uh, we have basic configure a w configure a basic WLAN on the WLC. So you had this activity also last time. So when you say WLC, that's wireless LAN controller. It's a device we're in. Hmm. it is used to com to communicate or it's being used in your network so if in this topology uh, there's an access point what's the access point here it's 80 and then um, access point is a controller based ap as opposed to the autonomous ap so uh, we also have uh, lightweight lightweight access points to communicate with a wireless controller so controller based APs are useful in situations where many APs are required in the network as more APs are added each AP autom is automatically configured and managed by the WLC so see WLC ang in charge so like for this one the AP is, is POE which means it's powered over the ethernet cable and is attached to the switch so this one we have the addressing table here. So you have R1. It has interfaces F00 and F0.1, 0 slash 1.1 with the corresponding IP address and subnet mask. And your S1 is configured with a VLAN that has DHCP. And your WLC using the management uh, interface, it has an IP address and subnet mask. And you have your AP and uh, three devices, two PC and one wireless laptop. So when you log in to the WLC, 
it's like uh, logging in with a wireless router. We have tried this, uh, but there are uh, tabs in the WLC that differs from the wireless router. So this one is a graphical user interface and menu from the Cisco 3504 wireless controller. So there are other models with similar features and menu. So for this one, so you are asked to log in essentials and then this one these are the menu so like you have your access point lines and then rogue and then and interferers and then wireless dashboard so this one when you view ap information so you have to click on access point on the left side menu to view an overall picture of the ap system information and performance and then the AP is using the IP address 192.168.200.3. And then money and details in the performance uh, summary. So because CDP is active on this network, the WLC knows that the AP is connected to the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 port on the switch. Another. So this one. Is naka enable ang Cisco Discovery Protocol. And then, uh, this AP in the topology is a Cisco Aeronet 1815i, which means you can use the command line and a limited set of similar iOS commands. For example, the administrator pinged the default gateway, pinged the WLYC, WLC, WLC, and verified the wired interface. So, this is pinging, pinging the IP addresses of the different ports or interfaces and then you also have uh, advanced settings for WLC so like you have the summary page there and then configuring a wireless LAN so when you configure a wireless LAN you have to create the wireless LAN first you have you have to apply and enable the in the wireless LAN Select the interface, secure the wireless LAN, verify the wireless LAN is operational, monitor it, and you can view wireless client information. So, these are the visuals for this one, for well, this configuring a wireless LAN. You can browse into it on your own. Then you have here configure a basic wireless LAN on the WLC. So I ha you had this last time. And then to configure a WPA to enterprise wireless LAN on the WLC, so you have to follow certain steps. Configure wireless LAN controller and send SNMP traps on an external server. And then you configure wireless LAN controller using radius to authenticate wireless LAN users and verify connectivity with the radio server. So when you say SNMP, it's a simple network management protocol and you also have radius. Radius is remote authentication, dial in user service. So these are all, this is a server software. So SNMP is used to monitor the network. And then the admin would want the WLC to forward all SNMP log messages called traps to the server. So wireless LAN, the network admin wants to use the radio server. So since it's an enterprise type, so it makes use of different servers, SNMP and radios. So like for radios, it should have triple A, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So instead of entering a publicly known pre-shared key to authenticate, users will enter their own username and password credentials. So the credentials will be verified by the radio server. So there is username and password, and then it would be uh, saved into the server. And then the radio server is required for wireless LAN that are using WPA2 enterprise authentication. So SNMP server and radio server configuration is beyond the scope of this module. So it's just an overview that there are servers on, on a certain topology. Okay, so this one. PCA... Um, it makes use of radius SNMP server. So when you configure SNMP, 
through the wireless LAN controller. So you have to first click the management. And then there is SNMP listed. Then click SNMP. And then there are trap receivers. So click new to configure a new SNMP trap receiver. That's how it is. So you enter the SNMP community name and the IPv4 address or IPv6 address, dependent on gigamit. Then click apply. So the WLC will now forward SNMP log messages to the server. Then for reuse, the same thing. You have to go into your WLC and then you click security tab and then there's reduce and then authentication. So um, so since PCA is designated as radio server, so you have to place it in the configuration. So enter the IPv4 address for PCA. This is the IPv4 address for PCA. And then the, the password used between a WLC and the radio server, then it is not for the users but for for the server. So click apply as soon as okay na ang configuration. So after clicking apply, the list of radios, list of configured radius authentication server refreshes with the new server listed here. So mahita na na ni mo dapat na nag add na siya o, uh, server for the radius. VLAN for a new wireless LAN. So topology, deploy, deploy VLAN and VLAN interface. Like uh, topology with VLAN 5 addressing. So WLC has five physical ports for data traffic. Each physical port can be configured to support multiple wireless LANs. So on each of the virtual interface, so physical ports can also be aggregated to create high bandwidth links. Ma'am, nawala daw si Camille. Okay, nag-brown out daw si Abina kung naon sa. Okay, sige, noted. Nawala si Camille sa virtual class. Okay, sige. Nakulbaan ko nawala si Camille. Okay, the network admin has decided that the new wireless LAN will use interface VLAN 5 and network 5.0 slash 24. So R1 already has a sub-interface configured and active for VLAN 5. So like here, pag magbutang daw ka show IP interface brief output, it will show that there is an active VLAN, which is one point, which is VLAN five, so one point five. Okay. So this would be your topology. And then you have um, an active VLAN there, here, 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 here for R one. It will happen. You configure a new interface. So VLAN interface configuration on WLC includes the following step. To create a new interface. So add new interface. Click controller interfaces new. Blurred uh, controller and then interfaces. The new. So that it will reflect here. And then next is you have to configure the VLAN name and ID. Since it's VLAN 5, you have to place VLAN 5 as the name and the ID is 5. And then next, you have to configure the port and interface address. So on the edit page for the interface, the edit, oh, this one is edit for the interface. You have to change the port number to one. Ano one gani? So, in the given in the topology, port number one is, is on the WLC. So that's based on the topology. Then, configure the VLAN five interface addressing here. Be the address of your VLAN five. So, an assign is five point two five four slash twenty four. R one is the default gate. R one is the default gateway of IPv four, which is five dot one. Uh, yeah, subnet mask is two five triple two five five dot zero, and then configure the HTTP server address. So here you have to configure five point one uh, address, and then this is the default gateway router address. So the, the router is configured in the HTTP pool for the wireless LAN network. So pag nagajoin si host, 
associate siya sa VLAN 5 interface, they they will receive addressing information from that pool. Then after that, after you configure the DHCP server, you have to click apply and confirm. And of course, lastly, you have to verify interfaces. So makita na mo sa list. You click interfaces and then the new VLAN 5 interface, interface is already there with its IPv4 address. And then the next one is the HCP scope. So when you say DHCP, you have to configure using the following steps. So create a new DHCP scope still in your wireless LAN controller. And you have to name, name it. So dapat nakabutang ang scope name. For example, this wireless management and then click apply. Then you have to verify. And you have to check it in the list if it's there. And then configure and enable the new DHCP scope. So you have just have to click on that and configure a pool of addresses. So like 200.0 slash 24 starting from dot 240 until dot 249. So the default router IPv4 address is configured with the in sub interface for the R1, which is 200.1. So this one, so 240, and it ends with 249. The network address is 200.0, the subnet mask. And the default router is 200.1. And then it should be enabled. And lastly, you have to go from this one you can figure you have to verify so verifying is you have to just look at in the list if not exist na ba siya. so here in wireless management and then the range of the address that you have declared okay. configuring w282 enterprise wireless lan there are steps create a new wireless lan you have to configure the ssid and the name here. The next, uh, you have to enable wireless LAN for VLAN 5. Changing WLAN parameters while it is enabled will cause the WLAN to, to be momentarily disabled and radio reset. Thus, may result in loss of connectivity for some clients. Press OK to continue. So, okay. So, after that, after you have uh, verified or enable WLAN for VLAN 5, you have to verify AES and 802.1x default. So, of course, you have to go here, security, and then you have to click AES, and you have to enable 802.1x. And then next, you have to configure the radio server. So, like here, you have to select triple A servers, then you have to place the IP address of the server, uh, from the drop-down list, then apply your changes. Apply. Alam. Simple way of doing it. And then to verify it, makita lang din siya sa list. Uh, and nag-exist na siya. So that's how it is to to configure um, WPA2 Enterprise on a wireless LAN. So later, I'll ask you to do this. Okay. Now, we are going to troubleshoot uh, wireless LAN, LAN issues. So, pag mag troubleshoot ka, it's just the same thing with what we are doing with simulation. You have to first identify the problem. So, what seems to be the problem? So, the first step is to check tama ba ang, ang pag-connect, so physical connection. So, you have to ask for uh, what could have been a problem if there is a client or a user within that network and then you next is to establish a theory of probable cause so after you have talked to the user and identify the problem you can try and establish a theory of probable causes so like first uh, it checks ni mo yahang wireless nick kung maping ba ni mo siya kung okay ang wireless nick meaning um, uh, okay ang yahang hardware so next na pod is to check if tama ba ang SSID. So you have to do it step by step para identify ni mo which one is the problem. Then test the theory to determine the cause. So you have to uh, you have to see or check for procedure 
to if it solves the problem so pili sa like for example the problem is wala the i nagchange the yung ssid and then the old ssid is still wala pa na update sa ano sa device so that's an example then establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution tapos after that you verify full system functionality and implement preventive measures so you have to correct the problem, verify full functionality, and if, if applicable, implement preventive measures. And of course, this is very important for offices. You have to document it, the findings, the actions, and the outcomes, because um, it is for future reference. Um, typical example for your ICUs, pag wala sila nang document, pag bagugod ang in-charge, it will mag take time para kay newly hired na in charge to verify because of wala siya reference wala siya wala documentation given in so what they're doing now is they document it naka document siya para if in case na uh, some people people come and go as employees so pag mag out na to na employee at least na inabili na record and katong bago we'll have to check na lang whatever is there okay. to assess the problem determine how many devices on the network are experiencing the problem so if tanan na experience so meaning um there is really an impact to the organization pag isa lang you have to also identify nganong dili siya ka connect so start the troubleshooting process at that at that device and then if there's a problem with all the devices on the network you can start troubleshooting process at the device where all the devices are connected so for example pag daghan ang device so you have to check your wireless router you should develop a logical and consistent method for diagnosing network problems by eliminating one problem at a time. Ayaw, sabay -sabay, ah. We have to like, okay, one problem first and then uh, find, troubleshoot it, find the cause, find the solution. Pag na okay na siya, naka-verify, naka-connectivity, you go into another problem. Ayan, dunga ga inyong problema kay, dunga na inyong problema kay Liswood. Okay. And then, if the wireless client is not connecting, so oh, this one here, this one is not connecting to the access point. So what could be the problem? So you have to check, confirm using IP config, verify that the PC has received an IP address via the HCP or configured with a static address if that's how it is. Then confirm that the device can connect to the wired network. So kung dili siya mag-work sa wireless, it try sa wired. If necessary, reload drivers as appropriate for client. So it may be necessary to try a different wireless NIC if the problem is with the wireless NIC. So like we have to ping the wireless NIC 127, that's your that one. It just had a reply. If the wireless NIC of the client is working, check the security mode and encryption settings on the client. So if the security settings not match, the client cannot gain access to the wireless LAN. So these are some of the examples on how to troubleshoot a wireless client not connecting. Then kung PC, how far is the PC from the AP? Is the PC out of the planned coverage area? Basig dinit na niya ma-detect ang connectivity. And then the channel settings, as long as the SSID is correct, and then there's a proper channel, it will really connect. And then check for the presence of other devices in the area that might interfere with the 2.4 gigahertz band. So like cordless phones, baby monitors, microwave ovens, wireless security systems, and potentially rogue, potentially rogue APs. So data from these devices can cause interference in the wireless LAN and intermittent connection problems between wireless client and AP. And you have to ensure that all devices are actually in place. Consider a possible physical security issue. Is there power to all devices and are they powered on? And I'm like, Ng mga technical for without any. So, nang, sa online, good na mag kuan ng cater na kag problem, and then your your client is non technical. It's a very challenging thing. Then, mag instruct lang ka over the phone or through chat. So, that's a very, very challenging way of troubleshooting. And then, lastly, you have to inspect links between cable devices looking for bad connectors or damaged or missing cables. O, basig. Uh, for wired connectivity, na damage lang tong cable or na crimp o tarong. So that's why there is no, no connection. 
And then if the physical plant is in place, verify the wired line by pinging devices. So, ping mo siya, include the AP. If connectivity still fails at this point, perhaps something is wrong with the AP or its configuration. And then when the PC is eliminated as the source of the problem and physical status of devices is confirmed, begin investigating the performance of the AP. So, you have to check the power status of the access point. Okay. So, pag, pag network is low, you have to upgrade your wireless clients. Then you have to split the traffic. Diba? You have to do load balancing. Okay. There are several reasons for split the traffic approach. Uh, 2.4 gig gigahertz band may be suitable for basic internet traffic that is not time sensitive. And then the bandwidth may still share may still be shared with other nearby WLANs. Tapos pag ang 5 gig is much less crowded than the 2.4 gig. It's ideal for streaming multimedia. And then if 5 gig band has more channels, therefore the channel chosen is likely interference free. And you update your firmware. Sometimes you should, there is a need to update your firmware. They, may, they, might, they, they release certain fixes for problems reported by customer as well as security vulner vulnerabilities. You have to update your device. Then there's WLAN issues here. So, okay, from this module, like if you have remote workers, you have wireless clients, then um, you're connected to this device. Sometimes you can encounter errors or problems on how you will be connected to the network. So you have to find ways to troubleshoot it. So there are methods. You have to identify the problem first. You have to, um, to choose which one is the, the suitable um, solution to that problem. Then there is also a configuration with uh, lightweight APs to communicate with a wireless LAN controller. So you have seen the steps. And then you configure a wireless LAN controller similar to configuring wireless router, except that it has control APs and other services or management capabilities. Then you have SNMP if, you, if it is used to monitor the network. And then uh, it's when your WLC is set to forward all SNMP log messages, uh, log messages means it is also called traps to the server. So you have to configure that. And then also you have your radio server for authentication, accounting, and auditing of services. And then there are six steps to troubleshooting process. When you troubleshoot a wireless LAN, a process of elimination is recommended. So you have to eliminate. So, okay, na check na ni, Common problems are no connectivity and poorly performing wireless connection when the PC is operational. So to optimize, you have to increase your bandwidth, either upgrade or you can just uh, upgrade your firmware if if you have or change your 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 ISP. Mona na jud na siya. No, kadi mata artista. A record ba yan? Hindi mata artista, so di ta matiman. So you should periodically check the router or AP for updated firmware. Guto. Sad, sad. Very sad. All the artista. So what can we do about it? No, like lag, I know her very well. <laughs> so you have to do this on your own because the, the module quiz is for your um review. I'll be sending now the Kahoot link. And I'll just put it in the chat. And then the the game pin is this one. I'm trying another method of letting you do Kahoot. The ways to shift. No, let me just see if I can access it. Please access the link. Do I access the menu? 
Okay, I'm trying another way. Ready? Get it out. Okay. So, you please put your name na lang ha so that it can be recorded on my end. Okay, I have to look at the results of this one. Kasi this would be recorded as your TLA also. So, like... Yeah, na puni siya ranking. Okay. Hindi na siya on the report. Okay. So, sige, you can work on your own with this one. Okay, so kindly work individually on that. And then I'll activate the the TLA for packet tracer. Please. Unmute yourself if you have clarification or questions. I just finished module 13. For basically, it's just um, configuring routers, wireless routers, and WLC. Ma'am, mag-start na pwede. Oh, Naka-individualize man na. Wala na ko nag, ano, as a group. So you can just answer 10 questions. Then submit if you are done. Thank you. Wait lang, I'll activate the classwork also so that if mahuman mo sa kahoot questions, you can do the TLA. Wala problem. You can access the Kahoot link. Okay, thank you. Ma'am. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, pause again. Um, pause i-pause na lang. Ano lang, you have to play the game. 
And then, uh, done na ka with the questions. Mag yes, ma'am. I-notify man at ako dali wait. I'm, I'm just trying this one also. Wait, tanaw na ako kung na-report. Nag, nag, na Okay, so okay, na 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 nagkawas na result sa akong end. So this is how I am. Okay, lang I'll I'll share my tab so that you will know how is it on my end. Ah, uh, sure, ma'am. Okay, so like this is the the output on my end. So it plus have it has rankings and then like like this. So mag change niya depending on kinsa ang mag exclude na pud for answers yata. Is that meaning zero two three seven one seven one o seven? Ma'am. Yes po. I'm saying bahaton ma'am if tapos sa kahut ma'am. Okay, if you're done with the kahut, I already activated PLA for this one. So you have to configure WPA to enterprise on the WLC. Thank you, ma'am. Tapos, ano, uh, if delete ko ninyo ma-open ang file, kuha alang ninyo dito sa NetAcad na 13.3.12. Okay. So, if you have questions, you can just ask me. So, I'm, this would be our asynchronous time. So, tasks na lang ta. So next meeting, uh, review questions ta, and then one more, one more configuration prior to the scheduled exam. So if you have questions, you can ask me and then um, asynchronous time. So if those who are in data mode, you can now go, then submit lang the TLA. Okay. I'll end na the recording, ha? Yun, basig na asay mo ang recording. Kung hindi masayang sa ako, i-post na lang sa mo. Ha? Nakay? Nakay. Okay. So how is the cancel something with Korea? Nag namatay.